Hey there guys, welcome back, Ricky here. Alright, so I have just finished dropping four knives, four Masamoro KSs on a piece of rolled buffalo, on cardboard, newspaper, and a leather belt. And a number of you guys actually reached out to me not long ago after I released a video about stropping, and you guys asked me, well, what is the best stropping material? So let me break down the methodology, so that way you guys aren't confused about how I tested these knives. I first sharpened all these knives on a Naniwa Professional 600 grit whetstone. Results aren't perfect and my tests aren't perfect. And so I did my best to keep my hand as steady as possible. But all of the sharpness after the whetstone, they're all within 10% of each other. So that's a really good thing. Now for those who don't understand what I'm talking about in terms of sharpness level, I'm talking about the Edge On Up PT50A. That's what I use to measure the sharpness levels of all of my knives. And it measures everything in grams. So when it gives your knife a number, say 333, it's telling you that it took 333 grams to cut a filament on top of a scale, a very high precision scale. Let me tell you the first numbers I'm gonna read off are the numbers of the knives off of the whetstone. I'll just name these by uh, the materials, so the belt knife, newspaper knife, the cardboard knife, and the rolled buffalo knife. So the belt knife off of the whetstone had a sharpness level of 333. The newspaper knife received a score of 308. And then the cardboard knife had 331, so it was within two points of the belt knife. So go Ricky. <laughs> uh, and then the rolled buffalo had a score of 300. So again, all of them are within 10% of each other. Um, in real life usage, I think if you were to use these knives side by side, they would pretty much feel identical to each other. And so then afterwards, I did 10 strokes on each side on each material. And after the first 10 strokes, here are the scores. So I'm reading the numbers directly as they are. Hopefully by the time you guys see this video, I would have had a chance to put together a graph to make all of the numbers make sense and show you guys actual percentage gains or losses. And so after the first 10 strokes on each side, the belt knife received a score of 302. So it had a reduction or a reduction of resistance or an increase of sharpness by roughly 10% or so, which isn't bad considering that it's just a regular belt. The newspaper knife received a score of 305. So that was surprising to me. The newspaper pretty much didn't do anything at all for a knife that was sharpened on a 600 grit whetstone. The cardboard knife was actually pretty surprising. After the first 10 pairs of poles received a score of 260, so a pretty dramatic reduction of cutting resistance. The rolled buffalo received the best score of 219. So the rolled buffalo leather took off the most micro materials on the cutting edge and uh, definitely cleaned it up the best. And then I didn't stop there. I figured let's go to round two and see how the materials hold up over time. And so again, I did another 10 pairs of pulls on each knife for each material, and here are the scores. So the belt knife received a score of 285. Not too much of a change. You're looking at a little bit less than 10%, I think. The second knife, the newspaper knife, received a score of 303. Again, newspaper doesn't seem to be holding very well in this test. Now the cardboard knife has slowed down a little bit. It's now gotten a score of 255, so virtually unchanged from the first set of results. The fourth night, we had the rolled buffalo receive a score of 202. So on the third set of uh, 10 pairs of pulls, here's what we got. The belt received a score of 248. So we're dropping a little bit now into the very sharp range, which is good for the leather. The newspaper received a score of 282. It's doing better. As you see, as time goes on, the newspaper is getting better. The cardboard surprisingly got a score of 293. I didn't expect it to go higher. I expect it to be at least 255 or below. And then the rolled buffalo received a score of 292. So before I talk about the results, I went back to the cardboard knife and did another 10 pairs of pulls because I really wasn't convinced I did it right or something was going on. Uh, it just seemed really odd to me that the results would increase in resistance instead of decrease. And after the 10 pairs of pulls, my last score, the fourth score, was 271. Again, still higher than cut number two, which was very surprising to me, um, but it did reduce from 293, so I was a little glad about that. The cardboard box was the only score that kind of deviated in terms of uh, its overall increase in resistance instead of decrease in resistance. So let's talk about the results and what they actually mean and kind of how I interpret them. This leather belt here is made of Latigo leather. 
Leather with leather is very respected. It's got a lot of oils in the leather. And most of the time when people talk about making straps, leather with leather is what they recommend. Now the reason I think this didn't do very well is probably two reasons. This belt was actually made by me. Uh, so that's maybe the number one. But actually, it was made by me. It's been cut multiple times. It's been rolled, it's been worn. And so it's very uneven. The surface is not very flat. It wasn't as if you got the leather as a raw piece of leather and uh, you know cut your strop materials that way. So this has been worn for, I think, four years at this point. So you know it's got a very uneven surface. You can't hold that against it. You still see that there is a pretty good difference between the first set of holes and the last, you know, scoring from 333 down to 248 uh, after the after I guess three uh, 30 30 pairs of pulls at this point. So not a bad material as a strop. You know, if you guys had a leather belt laying around and you didn't want to buy a leather strop or invest in you know any sort of fancy compounds, a leather belt will do okay. Just don't expect it to do miracles. Um, but it will work okay. The newspaper to me was a little bit surprising because everyone talks about how great newspaper as a strop is. I think newspaper would do fairly well if you had a, a knife that was actually polished on a 5,000 or 6,000 grit stone. I just think that newspaper doesn't have the capacity to actually pull off materials on a relatively low grit sharpened knife. Uh, you know, newspaper ending at 280, 282, not so bad, not really far from 308. So newspaper to me is not a great viable option for a strop. Uh, if you had it laying around, it'll still do okay. But again, don't expect it to do anything more than really just clean off your edge a little bit. And that's really about it. The cardboard is a great performer out of the box, <laughs> no pun intended. If you look at the middle layer of any box, you'll see that the middle layer is a made up of a layer that looks like waves, and then you have a top and bottom layer. And so after 20 pulls on the on the knife, or with the knife, the top and bottom layers were actually starting to cave in, but the cardboard seems to be performing really well when you use a fresh surface. So if you had a knife that needed to be stropped and you had a large box laying around, and you just simply use the different areas of the box as you're stropping it, the cardboard box will probably give you the best, best bang for the buck because most of us have boxes laying around and uh, you simply have to cut up or just divide up the boxes so that you won't strop on the same areas. That wavy middle layer actually started uh, affecting the actual stropping performance. And the rolled buffalo, again, this is a leather that I've been using for a while for my straps here. Um, I find it to be much more aggressive cutting than Latigo, and I also find it to be much more resilient than Latigo, and so that's why I use it for my straps. Uh, the scores surprised me. I actually thought the cardboard box would have done the best overall, or at least at, after the first 10 strokes or so, but the rolled buffalo proved that it's a much better material than the cardboard box and the Latigo. So scoring 219, 202, 192, you saw that the scores was progressively getting better, uh, which is a good thing because if you're gonna invest you know, 20, 30 bucks on a piece of leather for a strop, you would hope that it would do its job properly. Uh, so all in all, I mean, you can see the results for yourself. Keep in mind, all of these knives were sharpened on a 600 grit whetstone. Had I polished them on a 3000 or a 6000 grit whetstone, I think the results would be very different from what we see here, but I didn't do that today. That will be for another video. So I wanna give away my cardboard strop. Uh, this strop here, you know, is a lot of, it was a lot of fun to make, obviously. It was more of a, as a joke than anything else, but um, this is a carbon fiber base. It's a four millimeter carbon fiber base. If you guys didn't wanna keep the cardboard box, which I don't recommend you keeping, um, you can put on some 3M sharpening film on it or buy a piece of leather and put it on this strop. It will make for a really amazing strop. This base here is super stiff. It'll pretty much last forever unless you crack it with a hammer of some sort. Um, but it's a super stiff material and uh, it's something that I really love using. A lot of my newer straps are all using carbon fiber. So um, if you guys want this, let me know you want it uh, in the comments. Let me know what you do for a living and where you live and I will pick a winner. I will pin the winning post um, about a week after this video has been posted. Okay, well thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.